crazy times, the world just needs a hero to help cut through all the noise. Well, now you have two. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to your friendly neighborhood Heroes of Noise. I'm your host, Steve. Uh Uh-oh. Do you hear that silence, ladies and gentlemen? That silence is the absence of my awesome, amazing co-host, Dan. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, why in the world would Dan not be here? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked that. Here's all I know. I tell Dan, we're talking, I said, Dan, um, I really would like to talk about Star Wars and all things nerd. And he pretty much just hung up, didn't show up. So what what I'm left to imagine is he's just really not into the show anymore. I, I mean, it hurts my feelings, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm here for you. I'm joking. No, he had some previous things to do, so I decided to go ahead and give you guys a quick little half an hour quick show, if that's all right with you. Is that all right with y'all? I want to hear an applause, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to do today is a quick what I've been watching, and I'm going to give you a few things of film news, and then we're going to move on and say goodbye and all that stuff. But this weekend, Dan and I are going to give you a super awesome, amazing long show just to make up for Dan being absent. Shame on you, Dan. Wherever you are, shame on you, brother. Um, Let me go through a few things of what I've been watching, but first... Um, With the power of podcasting, Dan's going to drop in some of our uh, contact information right about now. Uh, This is freaking awesome. I'm so happy everyone just let me go and take off for a while. I am working way too much. I think it's time to have a drink. No stupid podcast to do this week. I could hear it right now. Hey, will you okay? This is Steve, and Dan's gonna give you the contact information because I don't know how to for whatever reason. Uh, give me a break. I love the guy, but holy shit. Learn the info. It's not that hard. We say it every week. Hello? Oh, hey, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> Just getting that vacation in, man. What's that? Seriously? Uh, I mean, sh- you know what? <sighs> sure, dude. No, no, I mean, it's cool. You, you already called me, so it's really not that big of a deal. I mean, honestly, I can do it in like 30 seconds, so... I mean, so could you, but you decided to call me, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, hey, tell you what. Let me just go ahead and do it real quick, okay? What's going on, everyone? This is Dan from Heroes of Noise, and I'm sorry that I couldn't be there this week, but I do want to do my part by giving you some contact information. You know, because it's hard to write these things down and do it yourself, apparently. Anyway, you want to reach the Heroes of Noise podcast at gmail.com? then that's exactly what you do. You go to Heroes of Noise Podcast at gmail.com because if you used Yahoo, it just wouldn't work. We have the Twitters. Feel free to hit us up at Heroes of Noise. You can reach myself, Dan, at Dan Q Public, and you can reach my buddy Steve at SE underscore Hudson Music. Use the voicemail. Get fancy. Give us a call, 559-492-9831. Leave us a message and we'll make sure to get it onto the show. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the magical voice, the golden tones, of Steve Hudson. Peace. See you next week. Oh, my God. Call me to do the contact info when you're in front of a microphone. Who does that? Okay, where was I? Oh, man, I should have bought that weed from that guy in the airport. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate it from your wonderful treetop mansion and your vacation home. I appreciate you sending that. So let me go ahead and tell you a few things I've been watching. I'm just going to give you two. And these two I'm giving you because I think I was on quite the late show on these. 
So it's a film called Train Spotting. I know you guys are going crazy right now saying, how dare you? We've all seen Train Spotting and loved it years ago. But let me tell you the situation. So I watched the first Train Spotting when there was a blockbuster. I mean, I used to live in Blockbuster. So someone referred this movie to me. So I decided to pick it up and I took it home. I was about 20, 21. I watch it and I remember watching and then getting up and being so utterly confused. Like, what in the world did I just watch? I mean, I get what they're trying to do, but it just didn't work for me. I guess I was in a different mode in life or whatever, or maybe it just wasn't for me at the time. So I literally slung it to the side and just when people brought it up, I was like, yeah, I remember seeing it, but I didn't really like it so much. Fast forward till now. The other night I was I was going through my on demand and I saw Train Spotting 2. And I think to myself, self, let's watch Train Spotting 2. Let's give the second one a go round. But I then remembered, wait a minute, I didn't even like the first one. And then I had yet a further conversation with myself saying, you know what, self? Maybe you didn't like it because you just weren't in that mode. Try it again. So I decided to say, you know what? Let's let's roll the dice and try this movie one more time. Trace Body, the first one. And I watch it. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, I humbly grovel at all the feet of the people who are fans of Train Spotting because I was on the late show. What a freaking movie. I so dug that movie. Um, for all of you that don't like the one person that doesn't know what train spotting is. So it's a 1996 movie and it's directed by Danny Boyle and it stars Ewan McGregor, you, uh, Ewan Bremer, Johnny Lee Miller, Kevin McKidd and Robert Carlyle. I don't even really want to give you the synopsis because the synopsis is going to ruin it for anyone that hasn't watched it. Just watch it. Go turn it on and prepare yourself for a hell of a ride. I've been a fan of Danny Boyle since train spotting, but I never went back to train spotting till now. It was such a good movie. The guy that really just blew the doors off for me was um, because, mind you, I've never been a massive Ewan McGregor person. But Ewan McGregor really, I was like, oh, I get it now. I totally get the Ewan McGregor love. And don't get me on Ewan Bremer. Holy cow, that dude did such a wonderful job as Spud. Spud is one of the most lovable characters (laughs) especially in the second one, but in the first one, he was such a lovable character. And it's just a drug-addled movie. And you you really find yourself rooting for these guys, even though there's really nothing to root for them. But people like Joran Bremner actually give you a reason to root for the guy, saying, you know what, I want this person to succeed. So I loved it. When that movie went off, I loved it and said, you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to push play immediately. So what I did was I just went right into Train Spotting 2. So we're talking about a four-hour marathon of Train Spotting. And let me tell you, it was worth it. Train Spotting 2 was just as good or better than the first one. And the person that stuck out on, on Train Spotting 2, though, was Robert Carlyle. By far. That dude. I mean, maybe I'm just not in the right circle, but the fact that that, that character didn't get talked about more drives me crazy. Robert Carlyle plays a, a a character called Begbie. And I mean, he leaves everything on the floor. Does such an amazing job at it. All of them are good. You and Brimner is even more lovable in this movie than in the first, but you, it was such a fun departure from what I've been watching lately. I mean, mind you, I love... Uh, you know, Marvel, DC, these big budget movies. I love them. Don't get me wrong. I'm a sucker just like anybody else. But it was a cool departure from, you know what? Let's just take this back and do something just solid acting, solid writing. I just enjoyed it from jump to finish. And and I, I mean, hey, Danny Boyle, he just knocked it out of the park. So if you have a chance to watch either one of those, preferably... If you can, if you haven't seen Train Spotting 1, I will tell you, you need to go back and watch it real quick. If it's been more than two, three years, watch it before you watch Train Spotting 2. If you have four hours to spare, just do it. It's really fun. I had a great time with these two movies. So again, if you have a shot, go for it and have a ball. Now, I did want to talk. I think those were the only two I wanted to talk about, but I did want to give Dan a shout out because he told me to watch. I might have talked about it last time. He told me to write, uh, to watch a show called my Hero Academia, 
And if any of you guys get a chance, watch that show. Uh, I haven't, I, I just finished it, so I haven't really gathered my thoughts about it. But if you have a shot, even if you're, because I'm, I'm not a huge anime person. I've only watched a few. I watched Death Note. And a lot of times that's like the, oh, well, of course you watch Death Note. Come on, that doesn't even count. I'm not really into the deep anime. And I'm not even sure My Hero Academia is deep anime. But me not being an anime fan, this actually got me. I really enjoyed My Hero Academia. So um, I'll probably talk about it a little bit more this coming weekend when I gather my thoughts about it. But I will tell you this. They know how to end the first season on a... It's not one of those things where, oh, what happens next season? Like, there's some sort of huge cliffhanger where you're like, I got to wait a year for this to come out now. I got to wait. Come on now. No. They just... They literally ended on a solid note where you could sit there and say, that was a good season. Like, if they never made another season, it was a good season, a beginning and end, and you could imagine what happens. But the fact that they made another season and it's really, really good, I really recommend everybody giving it a shot. Again, I will say more than I've already said this coming weekend. So please check out My Hero Academia. I watched it on Hulu. I'm not sure where else they show it. They probably have it on Crunchyroll. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But they might have it on Crunchyroll also. So now that I have almost talked your ear off sufficiently, can we get into some news, ladies and gentlemen? So our first news of the day. This was one that took me a bit by surprise, but at this point, you really can't be surprised at all. So today I I get the news that John Lasseter, the creative mind behind uh, much of Pixar's most amazing thing. I mean, look, he he directed he directed um, Toy Story, Toy Story 2, A Bug's Life and Cars. He won two Oscars. And he's the executive producer of the upcoming Incredibles 2, Wreck-It Ralph 2, and Toy Story 4 as well, as well as um, Disney's Gigantic. He stepped down due to accusations of misconduct, sexual misconduct. Uh, but he calls it, he says, I'm on a leave, of, a leave of absence, quote, for missteps at the company. And uh, how he has, quote, been falling short as a leader. I mean, this, this avalanche is coming, you know, if, Folks that did shady stuff in the background, I mean, it's coming to the forefront. And John Lasseter, I mean, goodness gracious, what are we talking about? Not saying anyone's above it, but everyone like myself, I'm not the only one that was fairly shocked by this. It's like, my goodness, these people were, if if the accusations are true, these people are making amazing movies under fairly ill conditions. And that's unfor- it's really unfortunate. No one's above the fray at this point. And it also leads to another thing. What happened is, um, there were stories that Will McCormick, who co-wrote Toy Story 4, and Rashida Jones, who was the other co-writer, that they left due to this issue with Lassiter. But they came out and and clarified this, and they said, quote, we did not leave Pixar because of unwanted advances. That is untrue. We parted ways because of creative and, more importantly, philosophical differences, unquote. Now, that made me think, what in the world does that even mean? I mean, Rashida Jones, she was looking, if I were to recall, she was looking forward to doing Toy Story 4. I mean, this was a huge thing. But they go on to say, quote, a culture where women and people of color do not have an equal creative voice. Ain't that about nothing? It's just, I mean, you see, you sit there and watch Coco. You're sitting there, uh, you see Coco coming out. You're like, oh, well, you, you would think in the back of your head, maybe these people... This company is on top of things. But when you have someone stepping stepping away from a behemoth like Toy Story 4 saying, I can't be a part of it because I don't feel like I'm represented. That is a problem. Such depressing news. We have such a, far, uh, such a long way to go. However, the fact that someone as strong as Rashida Jones and McCormick decided, you know what, I can't do it and left. That's a good sign. So, yes, John Lasseter, leave of absence. See how long that lasts from Pixar. Now, this piece of news... <laughs> You know how you think, you know how you think, hey, the reason that these huge, huge, massive executives make $14 billion a year is because they must be smarter than us somehow. I never thought this. I used to when I was little, but now I don't. They must be smarter. They know what they're doing. Well, this clears everything up. Paramount rejected WB's offer to CGI the mustache on Henry Cavill for Mission Impossible 6. 
That means they were going to say, Warner Brothers said, hey, tell you what, since we need him for reshoots, how about you shave his mustache and we CGI it back on for you? And Paramount was like, how about no? And WB still ended up doing the CGI. If they, if Paramount said it doesn't even look good, we will not do that. Why would you do that? Why would Warner Brothers sit there and say, okay, well, then we'll go for it. We'll just go ahead and try to CGI off his mustache. Here's another quote. Quote, a visual effects artist on Justice League said Warner Brothers offered to pay to have facial air added to Cavill for Mission Impossible 6 so that he could shave his mustache ahead of Justice League reshoots. He says, he goes on to say, quote, the visual effects team did test effects on footage of Cavill as Superman to prove how much easier it is to add a beard mustache than hide it. However, Paramount rejected this offer, unquote. It looks like WB really tried to sell it to Paramount, and Paramount was like, come on, man. I was born at night, not last night. They could see that it looked ridiculous, and yet Warner Brothers went forward with it. Come on, Warner Brothers. I mean, now, mind you, I love Justice League, but that first scene with that with the kid shooting Henry Cavill with the camera, he looks ridiculous. I mean, I don't know how someone is in the the test the uh, the test screenings, and the executives are like nailed it, boom, exactly the way we wanted to see it. Come on, y'all. Come on. Anyway, so. Anybody can be an executive. If you could walk upright, you could be a Warner Brothers executive. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's ridiculous. How do you look at that screening and say, yes, if the person you're trying to sell it to and say, how about we do this for you? We'll do it for you. And that person was like, how about you don't? We don't want that because it doesn't look right. Just take a hint. Anyway, in other funny news, speaking of Justice League. More than 130,000 people have signed a change.org petition to release Zack Snyder's original cut of the Justice League. 130,000 people. I did, I mean, I'm thinking maybe it's Zack Snyder's 130,000 relatives. That's what I'm going for. I didn't know he had that many. Because I did not know people were just, I mean, they couldn't wait and they were fiending for a Zack Snyder cut of the Justice League. Meaning that it's probably going to be a cut that's four and a half hours and not one joke. And look, to WB, I mean, coming back, to WB's credit, it sounds like they don't care if they get 4.8 billion signatures. They're like, we are not releasing it. So whatever they saw is like, yeah, that's not going to see the light of day. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they backtrack on that, but they're not trying to release this footage in the least bit. Which makes me wonder, dang, it makes me take a double step and be like, hey, yo, maybe I want to see this footage. How bad is it? Maybe I want to see it. But I don't see WB ever releasing it. But the fact that this thing on change.org, good grief, you're supposed to use that for good things. You have a change.org campaign saying, hey, we want to see your cut of the movie. Come on. Why? Why? What are we looking for? More terribly grim people. More sad faces, more, I mean, I know that these these jokes aren't going to be in there. I think the only thing that we're going to see in there that was pretty freaking cool, don't get me wrong, he's a good director, but the main thing we're going to get from that, he did direct the um, final after credit scene, which I won't ruin for everybody. He did actually do that, so we're going to still get that. But man, you want to, 130,000, sometimes I wonder, sometimes, sometimes I freaking wonder. And people are like fighting for this. <laughs> Maybe it's good. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Maybe it's crazy looking good. All right. We're running through these things, aren't we? Now, this kind of has me pumped. Dan Harmon is trying to get a community movie going. I mean, hey, why not at this point? I don't know what you could make it of. I don't know what the movie will be about, but Dan Harmon is fine. If you're firing on all cylinders like he is, he went, I mean, he did Community. Uh, he did um, Rick and Morty. If you're firing on all cylinders, I don't think you can lose. I really don't. His quote is, quote, I keep having conversations with the kinds of people that can make it happen. The Russo brothers moved from Community to becoming industry shapers. 
So did one of our most popular directors, Justin Lin, who directed the first paintball episode. I hope I'm not talking out of school by saying that. I'll get together with him every once in a while or we'll have dinner and we'll and we're talking. We keep trying to figure out a way to do this. There are kind of, there those are kind of guys, the Russos plus Justin plus a humble little me. Maybe there is a way to secure the money, the momentum to make something happen, but fingers crossed, don't want to jinx it, unquote. Now, let me just make it clear how hard this would actually be to get done. Harmon would have to find a break in the cast of quote. This is, this is a quote from Screen Crush. For he would have to find a break in the cast of schedules. Joe McHale, okay, that can happen. Gillian Jacob, Gillian get Jacobs, that can happen. Allison Bree, that kind of can happen. She's kind of busy. Danny Pudi, he's I don't know what he's doing right now. He's probably busy. Yvette Cole Brown, I know she's on the mayor, I believe, so she's busy. And Jim Rash. Now check this out. Donald Glover. Is Donald Glover coming back for a community a community movie? Maybe. I mean, you can throw those, you can roll those dice. He might. I don't know though. And you also have to try to get a potential Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is out. Not buying it. Not buying it. I feel like if you want to make a um a community a community movie and you actually want to get this done, I don't even know if you go after Chevy Chase. I'm not sure because I don't even, okay, I might be making this up, but from my memory, I didn't remember people being super duper jazzed about him on set. So he might be, I mean, do you really want to push for that? I don't know. But um, with Donald Glover, that's a tough one. Again, he's a man firing on all cylinders that skyrocketed out of community. So I don't know if you're going to get a Donald Glover. You might be able to get him for a few scenes, but again, some people have a, Place in their heart for 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 um, buddies, co-workers, people that you grew with. So he might just do this on like just because I'll just do this just because because you were boys because you you grew up with certain certain people. People made you huge. So he might just do it. I don't know. Um, but if he does, I'm look, I'm there. I'm watching this movie for sure. Uh, again, if I'm Dan Harmon, if everything I touch turns to gold, guess what your boy is doing next? I will tick A that says anything I freaking want for sure because I just can't lose. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. So that is all for today. I know it was a quick one. It was a fast one and I talk pretty fast. So I hope I, <laughs> I hope I slowed down as much as possible. I think Dan's going to put me at like a, you know, a half speed situation. But I had a really good time, even though my boy was gone. You know, even though my boy decided, you know what? I'm not really trying to deal with this cat. This, I mean, he doesn't really like dealing with me. I didn't really tell you that. Let me tell you a little secret about Dan. We're cool and all, but he doesn't really like me like that. You know, he's told me before. He's like, you know, I wouldn't even chill with you if you didn't have the podcast. But I'm like, Dan, it's kind of harsh, huh? But I mean, hey, he's being real. You can't hate a person for being real. I'm joking. He, you know, he loves me. What can you do? I'm a lovable guy. But that's about it. Um, so, listeners, amazing, awesome listeners, you have made it through a solo episode. I don't know how you did it. I tried my best. I tried my best, listeners. I hope y'all loved it because I love spending time with you. Next week, we're going to have Dan back. Can't wait to see my brother again. Um, but until that time, let me tell you something hear those awesome amazing incredible sounds flowing through your ear holes don't be startled it is simply your friendly neighborhood heroes of noise coming at you peace <laughs>